First at four, police say the suspect wiped his phone, but they still found something really interesting. New evidence, the Zion Foster murder case. Plus, Kim is working on your forecast. Well, if you look really, really close, you might see a couple sprinkles in downtown Detroit. I'll zoom in and help you out and let you know what the rest of the evening holds. Coming up. I'll show you how one city is dedicating itself to one little boy to help him fight a great big disease. Meet Beckett. <laughs> and see what community is turning itself into, well, I guess you could call it Beckettville. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, new evidence revealed in the murder case surrounding East Point teenager Zion Foster. It's day two of a preliminary hearing for her 24-year-old cousin, Jalen Brazier. He is charged with second-degree murder, even though Zion's body has never been found. Today, we learned Brazier's cell phone was wiped clean the day after Zion disappeared. Still, a Detroit police detective was able to find data searches on topics such as, are the police watching my house? Next, the judge saw a video of Brazier telling police what happened to Zion, and that was played in court. He says the two were together smoking marijuana when Zion stopped breathing. Listen closely to catch what he says. Brazier told police he put Zion's body in a dumpster, but he has served time for lying to officers during the investigation. This hearing will determine if there's enough evidence for him to go to trial. Now look for update about a little boy who is found just wandering alone over in Inkster. It was breaking news on Local 4 News at noon. Police tell us the child's mother has been located. He was found near Hickory and Carlisle about 9 o'clock in the morning. So far, police aren't sharing more details on how he ended up alone. At this point, we're no longer sharing his photo to protect the child's privacy. Well, the music world is mourning the loss of a Detroit legend from the 1970s. Then he was rediscovered through the Oscar-winning documentary Searching for Sugar Man. We're talking about Sixto Rodriguez. He became a musician while working on Motor City assembly lines. He released several albums during his career and gained cult status in other countries like South Africa. Australia and New Zealand, where he sold more records than Elvis. We're going to take a look back at his life, his career as well, on Local 4 News at 5. Sixto Rodriguez was 81 years old. Well, there seems to be a little bit of rain in every forecast this week, but it always depends on where you live. And some of us see some raindrops, others don't. Forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams is taking a look ahead to this evening. Hey, Kim. Hey, Karen. Well, I love when this happens because it's a really good example of what I mean when I say isolated showers. When I say isolated, I mean isolated. There is one area of heavy rain, not a thunderstorm, just a quick downpour. It's right over I-94 and Connor. So if you live in Gross Point Park, Gross Point Shores, uh, in the woods, you're going to get just a brief downpour. And then that's it. And in fact, if you live in the southern part of Gross Point Park, you're not going to get anything at all. So that's how isolated the showers are. We'll continue to see a couple spotty showers later on this evening. We can't completely rule out a shower at the Tigers game, but I think it's going to be pretty dry. And temperatures will be dropping down into the mid to upper 70s by the end of the game. Then tomorrow, our chance for rain is decreasing. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Kim. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis hopes to be the next president of the United States, and today we are getting another look at how he runs the Sunshine State. He just suspended another voter-elected local prosecutor. Kimberly Gill now joins us with a closer look at what's going on, and the state attorney is pushing back on this. You're right. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. Uh, Monique Worrell is a Democrat, and she's the only black woman serving as a local prosecutor in Florida. She represents the Orlando area, and she calls her removal a, quote, political hit job. The Republican governor of Florida makes this move as his presidential campaign is suffering and he's going through another shakeup in leadership. DeSantis says he's suspending Worrell because she failed to implement mandatory minimum sentences and abused her discretion to not bring charges in some cases. The two of them held dueling press conferences today. Take a listen. Prosecutors do have a certain amount of discretion about which cases to bring and which not. 
but what this state attorney has done is abuse that discretion and has effectively nullified certain laws in the state of Florida. That breaches her duties that she owes to the people of Florida under our state constitution uh, and provides the basis uh, for the suspension. If you listen to statistics from the Orlando Police Department, crime is down in the Ninth Judicial Circuit. So while they are giving a false narrative that I have failed to prosecute and I have led to people not being protected in this community, the statistics show that people are now more protected than ever under my leadership for the last three years. And by the way, Worrell points out the suspension is without pay. She could fight the move in court or the state Senate could reinstate her, but the courts have sided with DeSantis in the past and Republicans, of course, control the state legislature there. So. And this isn't the first time that this has happened to a state it, attorney. It's actually not. Back in 2022, the governor suspended a prosecutor in the Tampa area for signaling that he wouldn't bring charges under Florida's new 15-week abortion ban. So in this, in this case, Worrell is vowing, though, to run for re-election. So we'll see how it all plays out. All right. Thanks, Kim. Sure. Well, people all over the country were watching Ohio's special election that became a proxy fight for abortion rights. Voters there defeated a measure that would have required a 60 percent approval to change the state constitution instead of a simple majority. The issue one movement was put on the ballot to make it harder to enshrine abortion rights in Ohio's constitution during a referendum coming this November. Now, the issue one measure failed with 57 percent of people voting no. An American nurse and her daughter have apparently been released nearly two weeks after they were kidnapped in Haiti. The Christian group Elroy Haiti says Alex Dorsonville and her little girl are home safe. The group founded by her husband is asking that no one contact the family as they continue to process and heal from the situation. The U.S. State Department says it welcomes the news but didn't provide any additional details on this one. The charity said it may comment further in the coming days. OK, our long bout of lottery fever is finally broken. Now we wait to see if we will meet the winner or winners with a Mega Millions ticket worth one point. 58 billion bucks. The ticket that matched all six numbers was sold in Neptune Beach, Florida. That's just a little north of Jacksonville. Somebody bought that ticket uh, at a Publix grocery store. It's the first winning ticket since April 18th. You may remember we also had a huge Powerball jackpot last month. That billion dollar ticket was sold in Los Angeles. The winner has not come forward yet on that one. You may have heard about a little boy named Beckett fighting a rare form of cancer. We've talked about him on Local 4, and we found an entire city is wrapping its arms around him and his family. Paula Tutman takes us to Utica, where a new legion of warriors is joining Beckett's fight. The city of Utica is preparing to become, I guess you could call it, Beckettville for the weekend. This is Beckett. Is that Mohawk for you? Yeah. Do you love him? Yeah. Fighting a rare form of cancer, the enemy, a brain tumor. We got diagnosed exactly a month after his birthday. And his parents have had to uproot their entire lives, their home, and basically live in Tennessee, where Beckett is receiving life-saving care at St. Jude's for Children's Hospital. They had a gross total resection, which was amazing, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did radiation. Uh, for 30 rounds. So I had to take an extended leave. Um, so that means no pay, insurance out of pocket, just to maintain all that. Here's the interesting thing. The family actually lives in Shelby Township. Our address, depending on which side of the street you're on, it's either Utica or it's Shelby. You have 5,000 plus people, and this family lives across the border. Why this family? Well. Illness doesn't end at city borders. Just the sweetest little guy you'll ever meet. To see a young boy so you know, young and so happy being afflicted with such a tragic uh, situation as brain cancer, it just really touched my heart. And so amazingly, Utica has wrapped its arms around this family's entire life. Everyone in Utica that I've talked to just ha feels such a need to help this little this family and this little boy that uh, I just appreciate how the city's come together to look out for them. This year, the annual Utica Gasoline Alley Show is dedicated 
to Beckett. Oh, we're going to have uh, raffle baskets, t-shirts. I'm going to be here all day selling 50-50 raffle tickets for the family. So it's just going to be a fun-filled day. The world we live in today, <laughs> it's hard to see the good that has become of this world. And now that we've gone through something so hard and you can see the good, you can see the good in people, you can see the good in the communities, you can see the good in businesses. It's, it's insane to feel like you are supported and this kid is a hero and this kid is a miracle and he is going to make it through because we have so many people behind us. And of course, Beckett says, Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. What an adorable little boy. Okay, Saturday's the really big day with the car show. If you don't know much about Utica, this is pretty much ground zero. Uh, and USA Tire right here with that car show. If you go inside and you see all of the memorabilia, again, big fundraiser and it's one thing when you have a fundraiser but when you have so much of one community wrapping your arms around an entire family wow that is a lot of love and support Karen such a special boy and really a special community we appreciate it thank you Paula